Hey guys, uh, welcome back. In the earlier video, we talked about uh, dynamic analysis, or uh, specifically, we talked about the traffic analysis, right? Which means we were able to uh, intercept every HTTP or HTTP, HTTPS uh, packet on our proxy over here, and we were able to, um, you know, toy with the request, right? So uh, that was pretty handy. But now um, there are certain apps, right, where you can't do this, and uh, that is where you know bypassing the SSL pinning comes into picture. So let me pick up one of the apps. Let me open Twitter. Twitter is something which is used by many people, right? I do have my uh, you know proxy set up over here. So if I show you this, you can have a look here. It's the same configuration like earlier. I've not it changed anything. So I have I basically have the proxy set up, right? and uh, so when i switch on my or when i go to my twitter right and let's say i want to log into twitter right so let me go here let me put it as xyz at i don't know uh, xyz.com and the password being one two three four five six right so when i have something like this and when i let me let me go down to the interpreter and uh, I mean, let me go down to the interceptor, probably turn on interception, and when I click on login over here, you see the request doesn't come here, right? And the reason behind this is because, um, you know, because of SSL pinning. So what is SSL pinning? When, uh, so certain apps are designed this way to add that extra security, um, you know, layer to the app. So how does it work? When an app is uh, trying to connect to the server, normally three things you know happen or three three things are exchanged or agreed between the app and the server in this case the app being the twitter and probably the server of twitter right what are the three things uh, first one is the how will the key be exchanged second one would be what kind of encryption and the third one is how will data be marked as authentic right so one of the mecha mechanisms once the once the mechanisms are agreed on the client right once once uh, once the mechanisms are agreed the clients they request the certificate from the server right so in this case the twitter app will request the certificate from the server now then the certificate is validated and the public key is extracted from it right now here where it gets tricky the developers of the app sometimes pin the public key of the server into the app itself which means when they code the app they are going to pin the public key right into the app that way the app will compare the key right uh, which it gets from the server with the key which has been you know hard coded in the app and if it doesn't match then the connection is dropped right so now in such a case we can't use i mean a basic configuration of proxy would not work right so uh, you know it would end up something of this sort right do you get it so this is where we need to use uh, the concept of bypassing the SSL pinning right so um, now to do this we are not just going to use burp suit but we, in addition to that we are also going to use some uh, dynamic binary instrumentation right and there are many frameworks out there open source frameworks to do this one of them is the Frida framework so you can read about Frida over here over the internet over here right so you get information about how to install Frida how to use it what are the things you can do with Frida right so basically it's a dynamic binary instrumentation which means it's like a debugger but with some extra facilities or extra features such that you can toy with the whole functionality of the app when the app is running so that's the whole point right so when what we will try to do in basic terms here is that you know when the SSL um, you know check happens right when the when the check of the public key is happening we are going to inject a bit of code right to make the app right um, bypass the SSL uh, check part right so that it will accept the certificate of my burp suit and uh, you know the traffic will be um, you know intercepted and uh, can be relayed through the web server. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a demo of this, right? Um, yeah, so to start with, the first step is um, 
you know installing your uh, Frida so you can go down to this link and understand how to do that installing Frida um, is pretty simple you have information regarding what modules to install and so on so the whole step is over here so I'm gonna skip that part and I would allow you guys to just go through that but in my case I have installed Frida on a you know um, I have it on a virtual environment right so let me start that virtual environment which means I will have to go and source this right I think you guys know how uh, virtual environment works so let me do where am I right now okay so I have a virtual environment called virtual python 3 over here so let me source this there you go I have turned on my virtual environment right now and um, what else um, so I'm also assuming that you guys have already installed Frida now right so um, let's uh, see what to be done next let me see if I already have a Frida server on my device if it is there I'll delete it and install it once again so it's going to be adb shell okay no devices so let me connect the device I think the device got connect disconnected adb connect 192.168.56.101 right so that's the device let me do the whole adb shell again there you go let me sh uh, check the contents of data local temp folder there you go uh, okay there is already a frida server which means i'm going to delete this now and install it again because i want to show you guys how to do it right from scratch right so there you go i deleted it right so which means it shouldn't be there now let's go back great so I'm back to my virtual environment which already has Frida installed right uh, so what do we do first step is we go and uh, push the Frida server right so Frida server is something which you get when you um, it uh, the Frida basically works on a server client kind of a model right so you're going to install a server on the device right on the in my case the emulator so this is my device so I'm going to install it on my device over here um, it's going to be a Frida server so how do I do it first I'll have to push it right so let me go down to my desktop and find where my Frida is right so here you go so this is my Frida server right so this is something you get when you install Frida now I'm going to push this uh, Frida server so there you go I'm pushing the Frida server where am I pushing it to I'm going to push it to uh, the data folder of my so I'm going to push it here with the same name as Frida server okay so the push is happening there you go the push has completed and the next thing is I will have to give some permissions right for because you have to make it executable so there you go the permissions are given triple seven permission and once we are done with that let's kick start the Frida server right how do we do that we go to adb shell and there you go so we have started the Frida server so what we did we installed the uh, first thing is we installed Frida on my Santoku machine right and that is there as part of this virtual environment next is as I told Frida works on a server client kind of a model so the Frida server has to be pushed onto the device right change the permission of the file and then uh, start the Frida server okay so once that is done now what do we do now because the Frida server is running it can hook on to any processes which are running on your Android phone and let's see all the processes which Frida can hook on to so how you do is you run the command Frida, Frida um, ps dash u right so there you go these are all the processes which are running on my uh, you know Android phone and these are the processes into which my Frida can hook on to right great so I also know my Twitter is running right so let's see uh, where is my Twitter mm, so it's going to be let's we'll have to do a grep right let's do a grep for Twitter okay there you go so the Twitter is running I don't think you guys can see so let me run this again there you go so this is the um, Twitter's uh, you know package and we have the process ID which is 3098 for Twitter right which is also running um, on the burp suit I have already configured right so burp suit has already been configured over here um, give me a minute so proxy options yeah the burp suit has already been configured which is pretty good what should be done next yeah 
so now um, we have to um, generate a new certificate down here right we stop this interception so uh, the next step what you got to do is you need to generate a new certificate right so um, or you could export an existing certificate right uh, but what I would do is I would regenerate the certificate so I want to regenerate browser to take effect you have to restart and install the new certificate in the browser okay anyway so let me export export the existing certificate right so let me export it um, so how do I export I'll have to export this in a um, certificate in DR format which is fine um, let's do this let's um, export it yeah next and yeah so I think uh, this folder probably already has some certificate let me delete that because I don't want that uh, to cause any issues uh, with the uh, so I'll have to go down to burp so I think there is a certificate already let me delete this right so let's keep this here so what do I name this let me name it as uh, cert dash dr okay so I think next okay so probably I think I'll have to give the uh, let me delete this for a minute refresh so, so let me do this again uh, next so it's going to be cert um, dash dr dot cr right the extension as well so there you go so the certificate was generated this is my certificate so uh, uh, the certificate which i earlier generated i have transferred it to my uh, santoco vm right and you can see over here this is the certificate so what do we do now next we need to push this certificate onto my uh, you know device right so I need to push it so I'll have to do a ADB push now right so let me clear the screen a bit and there you go that's the command for pushing the certificate onto the device right so I did that it got pushed let me uh, uh, go and probably go to the ADB shell right so I'm on the ADB shell and uh, because it is in the CR format we'll have to convert it into dot CRT right so how do we do that so we will go to we'll do cert oh sorry I'd have to go to the location my bad let's go to this location so we go to the location and uh, okay sorry i think i got a mistake data local and temp so i'm in the location now and uh, let's rename this particular file okay there is already there are two files already hmm. so we will have to delete this before i think this is something from your old project which is still here let's remove this actually let me push it once again i'm not sure if it got replaced so let me like delete both of this right so that's good now there is nothing right which means let me go back and let me push it again because i don't want uh, to use the old certificate so let me push it again there you go so it got pushed right so let's go to adb shell and let's go to this particular location right great and once you have gone to the location it's all about renaming it right renaming the dot cr2 dot crt there you go that is done so if you look at the file here this is the file right this is a certificate dot crt and it is happily sitting up there right so um let's recollect what was our whole objective you know the whole twitter uh, app you know we were not able to uh, intercept it using our burp suit over here right we did the whole uh, HTTP HTTPS um, you know interception in the previous video as part of traffic analysis 
but because these guys were using something like SSL pinning, we were not able to do it. So we are trying to use Frida to bypass the SSL, right? So how are we going to do this? So now let's go back to my desktop, which has this CD. Let's go to this Frida folder. And if you go to the Frida folder and if I do a ls, you see along with the Frida server, there is a JavaScript, which is Frida dash Android dash repinning dot JS, right? So this is the script, right? So you can get the script over the internet. Again, you know, people have written a lot of modules, a lot of scripts to, you know, do a lot of things using Frida. So, you know, bypassing for bypassing SSL, you know, this is kind of like a universal script, which you will get over the internet, right? And um, uh, you can use this script to basically now bypass. So how will we do this? So we are going to use this uh, script along with the Frida command. So this is how it's going to be. We call Frida. Uh, we're going to give the file, which is basically the package com.twitter.android, right? And uh, we are going to also attach this particular JavaScript to run, right? So I did that, right? There you go. So we have, it has attached the 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 bypassing of SSL has completed, which means now I can go to turn on the intercept, right? I've turned it on. And if I try to do login, let's say I do the same thing like earlier, XYZ at XY, you know, Z dot com and password one, two, three, four, five, six, right? When I hit the login, you can see here, right? See the whole XYZ at uh, xyz.com the password everything has been caught right so so the interception basically worked right so that is this is how it actually you know uh, uh, the 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 bypassing of SSL works so what we did here was we used dynamic binary instrumentation which means uh, during the process or the script injected itself when the SSL negotiation was happening and it kind of hijacked the SSL context right and uh, you know, so the check where the app is trying to check the public key, the pinned public key with the public key of the server, that particular process was bypassed. And as a result, the app is now talking to my proxy as, you know, like as if this particular proxy is itself the server of the app. Uh, so this is how you can, you know, use uh, dynamic instrumentation to bypass the SSL pinning uh, when, when you are... Uh, you know when when you're not able to intercept uh, traffic because of SSL pinning this is a, this is a very interesting and a very useful way of bypassing it right so again thanks for watching uh, have a good day